Good to go. Hi, uh, my name is Stefan Johansson. I work at Oracle in the Hotspot GC team. Uh, I've been working with GC for the last seven years, uh, but I've been at Oracle for almost 14 years now, working closely to the JVM the whole time. Okay. Uh, so my focus in GC has mostly been, been G1, uh, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Uh, if we go back some years to when JDK 8 was released, uh, G1 was kind of the new cool GC, getting a lot of buzz, and by some maybe being perceived a bit like Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story, hence the title. Uh, this is not true anymore. Instead, we have new other cool GCs. We've heard about one today uh, that gets most of the buzz. Uh, and G1 has matured into a well-performing, very stable default garbage collector. Uh, the goal of this talk is to show this progress in G1, and by doing so, hopefully convince some of you still on JDK 8 to move to new re re JDK releases, 11 or maybe 14. Before we get started, you've seen this before. Uh, the agenda for today, uh, I'm going to start off with a very short introduction to GC as a concept then G1 uh, in a very quick fashion, uh, and then focus mostly on the progress we've done in G1 since JDK 8. And hopefully in the end, I'll have some, some time to do a short glimpse at the future. So, GC in Open JDK. Uh, garbage collection is not only about collecting garbage. Before we can do that, we need to hand out the memory. And having a fast and efficient allocation algorithm is very important. And this is something that's done fairly equally to all the garbage collectors in OpenJDK. So what we have is something called TLabs, thread local allocation buffers, so that when a YAW thread needs to allocate a memory or an object, you basically just have to add to a pointer and fill out the object. It's a little more, but that's the, the gist of it. Uh, then when we have memory that's not used anymore, then the garbage collection kick in. And this is, of course, the most efficient or, and most important thing for the garbage collection algorithms. We have quite, quite a few of them in OpenJDK. Uh, as I mentioned, you heard about Shenandoah already. Uh, when you design a garbage collection algorithm, you have to take a few different concept, concepts into consideration and do some trade-offs between those. Uh, we have many concepts, but the, the three I'm focusing on today are throughput, latency, and footprint. By throughput, we basically mean the number of operations you can complete in a set amount of time while latency is the time one operation takes to complete. So if you have a long GC pause, that will affect your latency. Footprint, that is basically the resource overhead caused by a garbage collection algorithm. So uh, for example, many of these GC algorithms need extra memory to be able to do the, memory, uh, do the garbage collection. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to focus on memory overhead today. So the current collectors in OpenJDK, or actually I actually included CMS as well, even though it's been removed in JDK 14. Uh, I'm sorry for those of you who had CMS as their favorite, uh, but there are new good alternatives that we can use going forward. So a few words about the collectors still around. Uh, we have the serial collector, very basic and easy to understand collector, uh, which has its main feature at it has very low memory overhead. So if you, for example, run something like a function in a cloud, uh, serial can be a really good choice uh, because you might do, not do very much garbage collection. Uh, the parallel GC was the default up until JDK 8. Uh, it's very throughput oriented, focusing on, on giving the best possible throughput for Java. Uh, it also has very good average pause times, but the worst case latencies can be bad because if you run with parallel for a long time, in many cases you, you eventually run into a full collection, which has, yeah, the, they, they take a lot of time. Uh, so there's where G1 come in, the new default collector since JDK 9. We try to have a balanced performance, still providing good throughput, but also caring about the latencies. How we do this, I will show you a bit later. Uh, the new and cool GCs focusing on low latency, CGC and Shenandoah, uh, they are experimental. Uh, but yeah, I guess both of the teams are working hard to, to make them fully supported. Uh, you've heard, heard a lot about Shenandoah already, but yeah, from CGC, the, the main goal here is to try to provide so millisecond pause times. So yeah, we're looking forward to that being fully supported. That was that about GC. So let's move over on to G1. 
as I mentioned, the basic idea here is to provide a balance between latency and throughput. Uh, to be able to do this, we have two big concepts in G1. Of course, there are more things needed, but the two big th things are that it's region-based region and we have concurrent marking. What we mean by region-based is that we divide the heap into several heap regions. Uh, so, for example, if you have a 10 gigabyte of heap, we try to have 2,000 regions, uh, but that's hard because you want a multiple by two region size. So you'll have a few more, but we'll, we'll use a four meg region size. Uh, those regions can be used both for young and old generation. Uh, so G1 is still genera re generational with two generations, but these generations are not big chunks of memory, but they are a set of regions instead. Uh, what this gives us is that we can collect a few old regions at a time. We don't have to collect all old regions at once, which is the case for serial and parallel. Uh, but to be able to do this, we also need to know what's live in those old regions. And here's where the concurrent Morgan comes in. Uh, and as Vohman uh, mentioned previously, I won't have time to explain how the concurrent Morgan works. Uh, but yeah, look it up. Uh, <laughs> so basically, when you have the marking information in place and you have uh, a region-based collector, you're able to collect a few old regions at a time. Uh, we call this mixed collections, and by doing so, we are in many cases able to avoid the long and costly full collections. Uh, another thing with G1 uh, that might have been a problem in the past, but we're working hard on it, trying to make it true, is that we want it to be easy to tune. You, you shouldn't be able to have to set a lot of different flags to, to change the behavior. Uh, so we have a main tuning knob, it's the pause time goal. Uh, and if you want to increase the throughput, you can increase this value. If you want better latencies, you turn this value down. So the, the default value here is 200 milliseconds. That has shown us that it's a, a pretty good default. It gives a balance between latency and throughput. Uh, but your application might have different needs. So try tune this the first thing you do if you want to change the behavior of G1. So the current status of G1, uh, it was added in JDK 6, but the support came in JDK 7U4. Uh, after that, we worked really hard on making G1 sort of complete, uh, adding some really necessary features to it in the JDK 8 timeframe, and also improving the performance a lot. Uh, one such uh, feature is uh, class unloading after concurrent mark, so you don't have to rely on a full collection to be able to do class unloading, because G1 tries to avoid full collections, so in practice you would never do class unloading. Uh, in JDK, we added class unloading after concurrent mark, uh, and a lot, a lot of other features making it more stable and more mature. And in JDK 9, we decided that it was time to make G1 the default collector. A somewhat controversial decision, uh, because people thought that parallel has better throughput, uh, but we saw that having a balance between latency and throughput is very important. Uh, and the fact that we are also working really hard on improving G1, uh, we want the users to benefit from all those improvements without having to switch GC. So making it default to 9, I think it was a good decision. Yeah, that's the background. Let's look at the progress or what we've done since JDK 8. Uh, We've done a lot, uh, around 700 enhancements to G1 since JDK 8. Some of those are big features, uh, but a lot of them are just small enhancements improving small parts of the garbage collection algorithm. Uh, those together show some really significant improvements, uh, and we see those across all areas. It's not done like we're, we're only improved latency or only improved footprint. We managed to improve all areas. Uh, and the way we've been able to do this is that we've improved on all deficiencies and in some cases been able to, to cut away trade-offs that were done in the early days of G1. So yeah, we see some really significant improvements uh, in G1. Uh, yeah, just a sip of water here. So throughput. Uh, one of the big things we've done to improve the throughput in, in G1 is that we've improved the NUMA awareness. So G1 has always have a very basic NUMA support since the Java heap itself has a basic NUMA support. But what we've done in, in the late, latest release is that we now actively try to allocate Java memory on a local NUMA node 
giving better performance. The same goes with the GC. The GC tries to keep the, the memory on the same NUMA node as it was allocated. We still have more IDs and, and more work to be, be done in this area, but those things really showed some good improvements. Uh, we also spent quite a significant amount of time on making the concurrent work more efficient. Uh, so the important thing here is to try to keep the GC out of the way, making sure the Java application can use as many resources or all the resources in the best case. So this can, ha this can be that making the marking more efficient in itself, but it can also be delaying the marking or making sure that instead of running five marking cycles, we only run two because we, we can still avoid the full collections. Uh, so the work we've done there is also proving to be really important for throughput. We also added a parallel full collection to G1. Uh, this can be seen both as a throughput and latency thing, but if you want to tune G1 to be more throughput oriented, uh, you might be able to suffer or take the hit of a few full GCs if they take not extremely long amount of time. Uh, so having a parallel full GC that works kind of similar to the other full GCs out there uh, is really important for G1 if you want to tune it to like work well in, in batch work scenarios. So let's take a look at some numbers uh, from the throughput improvements. Uh, I'm using spec ABV 2015 here. Uh, the, the results we're looking at are the, the throughput metrics, uh, the raw throughput metrics from spec ABV, if you're familiar with this benchmark. Uh, it's run with a 16 gigabyte of heap uh, and I've, I normalized the score towards JDK 8 and parallel because that was the default back in JDK 8. So as we can see, in, in JDK 8, G1 was behind, uh, but we've been able to close this gap in JDK 11 and 14. We're around 10% better when it comes to performance or throughput performance. This is, of course, not only GC improvements. The whole Java platform has been made more efficient and performs better. Uh, but having the GC, uh, G1 especially, keep, keep more out of the way has really helped improving this performance. Uh, yeah, like letting Java run on the CPUs instead of the GC running on CPU really helps here. Yeah, let's move over to latency. Uh, this is an area where we've, yeah, most or most, but at least a lot of the enhancements gone in here. Uh, we improved the parallelism in a lot of the different GC phases and making sure that even though a phase seems to be pretty small, uh, we make sure that it's running run in parallel and, and take a short amount of time to keep the pauses as short as possible. We also worked very hard on making those uh, phases more efficient. For example, reference processing, uh, that's Java lang references. That phase has been both improved when it comes to parallelism and the way the efficiency of the processing. Uh, so if you have an application where you in the past seen problems with, with reference processing, it might be a good idea to check out the later releases. We also improved a lot of pause on, on pause time predictions. Uh, and what I mean by that is basically, G1 tries to predict the number of regions it can collect, uh, keeping the pause target set by the user. Uh, if those predictions are bad, we might take too many regions and then not be able to keep the pause time target. Uh, so working on this is really, really important if you want like a predictable latency story. Uh, another part of this predictable latency story is the portable mixed collections. Uh, and as I mentioned before, mixed collections are the collections where we collect a set of old regions. Uh, those are a bit harder to predict because we're not doing this as often and they have different characteristics from the young regions. So what we do here is that instead of like before the GC starts, select a set of old regions that we have to complete, we select a set of old regions that we try to complete. And then we complete as many as we can until the post time target is met, or we don't go over the post time target if possible. In some cases, we still do, but this is a good, uh, a good improvement to try to, to achieve that, always keeping the post time target goal that we have. Yeah, let's look at some results here. Uh, once again, spec ABV 2015 results, uh, but this time we're looking at the throughput requirement, uh, the, the, throughput the throughput metric but with latency requirements. Uh, so these are basically still throughput scores, but they are affected a lot by the latency 
provided by the Java platform. Uh, again, it's from the same runs, so it's a 16 gig heap. Uh, we see here that G1 in JDK8, not very impressive. Uh, but we've done a lot of work. Uh, so in JDK11, uh, around 10, 15% up, I think. But the big thing comes in JDK14, where we're more than 40% better than parallel in JDK8, and even more if you compare it to G1 itself. Uh, the cool thing here is also, or to me cool thing, uh, is the last bar here. So there I set the pause time target to 50 milliseconds instead of the default 200 milliseconds. Uh, by doing so, you can see that I improved the, the latency score uh, towards the default. Uh, this, of course, comes with the throughput cost. Uh, but if your main goal is to have good latencies, uh, it's very easy to improve that by just tuning the pause time goal. Uh, another thing to mention is like the average pause time. Uh, from JDK 8 for G1, the average pause is around 160 milliseconds. Uh, so we're still, a, we're still below the pause time target. Uh, in JDK 14, it's down to 100 milliseconds. Uh, so we've done some quite significant improvements here. Uh, and that's really nice to see. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, the footprint. Uh, and as I mentioned, it, this is memory footprint. Something we heard a lot of when it comes to G1 is that the remember sets take up way too much space. And that was true back in the day. Uh, the remember sets are the data structure that G1 needs to be able to collect a region. So all young regions always have remember sets. In the past, old regions also always had remember sets. But we only collect old regions after concurrent mark cycles. So for much of the application run, we kept those remember sets around without, having to, without needing them, basically. Uh, so what we re realized was if we can rebuild those remember sets during the concurrent cycle uh, and just having them around when we actually need them, that should provide a much better user experience. And I'll show you that in the next slide, how, how much this gave us. Uh, we also improved the sizing ergonomics a lot uh, since the ADK 8 timeframe. Uh, and this is basically making sure that we size the remember set data structures correctly with the regards to, to the region size and stuff like that, making sure that yeah, they, they, they follow a good pattern. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is uh, the way G1 return memory to the operating system when it comes to Java heap memory. Uh, in the past, this was only done after full collection. Uh, and as you remember, G1 tries to avoid full collections. So basically, we never return Java heap memory, even though it wasn't used. Uh, nowadays, G1 can return uh, heap memory after a concurrent mark cycle. Uh, that, together with the fact that we also can schedule periodic concurrent mark cycles, can really help out if you have an application which have kind of an idle state or something like that, uh, where you want it to behave better when it comes to memory footprint. Uh, I don't have any slides to show those kind of improvements, but I think you get the idea. Uh, Instead, I have a slide that shows the improvements done to the remember sets. Uh, I tried to use SpecJV for this, but they don't have very many old regions uh, and objects. So I had to use something we call the big ROM tester to be able to show this. Uh, this is instead a benchmark that, that's tried to mimic kind of an in-memory database, uh, keeping a fairly large live set with a lot of references between the objects, which is kind of the worst case for the G1 remember sets. Uh, this is run with a 16 gigabyte of heap. Uh, and as you can see, in JDK8, uh, we used around 4 gigabyte of extra native memory to be able to support a 16 gig heap. So this is a 25% overhead. Uh, so I really understand the people complaining about, cl complaining about this. What we managed to do in JDK11, when we, where we added the rebuild remember sets at concurrent mark, was to push it down to around 2.7, 2.8 gigabytes. Still quite a lot, but the improved ergonomics around the sizing also really helped out. So in JDK 14, we're down to around 1.6, 1.7 uh, gigabytes. Uh, a fun thing is also to note is the kind of sort pattern you see here. So basically, the memory usage go up at the concurrent morgan cycle end. And then while doing the mixed collections, it slowly decreases until no more mixed collections is done. Then go, go down to the kind of stable state again. Uh, but 
yeah, the big room tester is stressing this quite a lot, so we're having back-to-back -back concurrent cycles. Uh, it's, it's not only that we improved footprint for this benchmark. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes you have to do trade-off between latency and, and footprint and stuff like that. In this case, we managed to improve both areas. So the average pause time in eight for this benchmark was 1.7 seconds with the default pause goal. Uh, in JDK 14, this is down to 360 milliseconds. So that's also quite a significant improvement in pause times. We're still over the target, but that's also kind of, it's, yeah, it's a really nice, nasty benchmark uh, in some sense, uh, but good for finding problems. Uh, yeah, that's basically it, and I think I, I will have time for the future. Uh, so these are the main three investigation areas going forward. Humongous object handling. Uh, humongous objects are basically a bit simplified objects larger than, than a region in G1. Uh, those can add up to fragmentation both within regions and between regions, and we want to improve on this. There are ongoing discussions on, on how to do this most efficiently in the open, mail, open JDK mailing list. So if you're interested, please subscribe and, and follow the discussions there or join in. Uh, same goes for improving write barriers, discussions ongoing there as well. Uh, we have some different ideas on how to improve this. Uh, the main reason behind this is to try to improve the G1 throughput, because uh, right now the G1 write barrier is, is a bit more expensive than the other ones. Uh, but we're having, we, we have plans on improving this as well. And again, footprint reductions, as you see, we still are, have like 10% overhead to be able to support that benchmark. We want to, to cut that down even more. Yeah, the key takeaways from this presentation then. So we've done massive improvements to G1 since JDK 8. Uh, and if you, if you have an application running G1 on an older version, I really encourage you to try out JDK 11 or JDK 14. Uh, I'm sure that's going to give you a performance boost. If you're not running G1, you should move to a later release and try it out, because it might help you out. Uh, we also have some really exciting features, features and ideas in the path. Uh, and I'm sure that they are going to help us bring G1 to infinity and beyond. That's all for me. Thanks. We have uh, a few minutes. Any takers? Hi. Um, what's the lowest pause time target that is practical that you've seen? <sighs> well, very hard to say. It depends on the application. Uh, we, we never force it much lower than, f or that's not true either, but set, as you see, setting a, a pause time goal at 50 is okay. Setting it at 10, you, you will, I mean, you should try out CGC or, or Shenandoah or something like that, because G1 is focusing on a balance between latency and throughput, so going all the way to the really ultra-low latency is not really a goal. Uh, but yeah, I think 10 milliseconds should be okay uh, in, some, in some cases, depending on how the application looks. Uh, you will do a lot of GCs. I, I think the total GC time in the, in the, when I tuned the pause time goal uh, went from 200 seconds, or, or yeah, total time 200 seconds to 600 seconds. So you, you trade away throughput when you do that kind of thing. So you have to keep that in mind. Why do you say <coughs> Uh, you mentioned making the write barrier faster. Yeah. But the write barrier should only be hap uh, happening if there are interregion pointers. Yeah. Um, is there any plan to make there to be fewer interregion pointers? So you mean increasing the region size? Or uh, it, it's something that we've observed that we go into the write barrier a lot. And we wouldn't expect that if everything was in the new gen. Um, oh, OK. Yes. Yeah, so, well, eventually, you have to promote objects too old if they really, or you could have just one generation, but might not. Yeah, there are always trade-offs. Uh, for G1, we're not looking into liking it, make, make single generation at right now, uh, or ever, I would say. Uh, but something that we have thought about is making the regions larger, and that way having fewer in, like, points between regions. Uh, not sure that really helped you out, but <laughs> thanks Please. for the question. Thank you. 
anymore. Everything is crystal clear. Everybody will move to JDK 14. Uh -huh.